Hello, it's Miko Sam Possible. Miko, my name is Tamper16. Welcome back to another reaction video. Welcome to my 12th reaction to Harry Hills TV Burp. Uh, this is another episode that was previously recommended to me. This is Series 9, Episode 6. Bang. Not the bill. Yoink. So blurry, I couldn't see what that little TV said. Is it dancing on this? to TV Burp, possible New England goalkeeper spotted on La Cries to Candleford. <laughs> <laughs> Barack Obama in drag on Shipwrecked. Barack Obama. Welcome to Clarence. <laughs> <laughs> and George from Rainbow makes he... a speech in the House of Commons on Margaret. The right honourable lady's speech. <laughs> He's nothing but a defiantly assertion of. Did he try to say Barack Obama and butchered the hell of it? What did. Let me hear that again. Barack Obama in drag on. Barack Obama? Welcome. On Margaret. The right honorable lady. I think that's what he's going for. He's nothing but a defiantly assertion of birth and privilege. Oh, Jeffrey. <laughs> What's the slowest method you've ever used to cook a chicken? That'll be that. Whoops. Takes about a day and a half, but the meat does come out lovely and tender. <laughs> this was on Best in Show on Five, which offered us a peek into the world of the competitive animal breeder. We met Paul and Nikki, who bred fancy chickens. And what do fancy chickens do to relax? You get attached to them. They're like children and just can't see life without them, could we, really? They tend to like EastEnders as well. That one likes him a day on Yeah. We have one that liked Newsnight, but we ate it. Oh. I know what you're thinking. If one chicken likes Emmerdale, the other likes EastEnders, how do they change channel? Well, that's easy. Oh. That would be a fight. Go on, change channel. <laughs> oh, shit. Look, change channel for me. That's the color. Oh, damn it. Not Harry Hill, 1950. Change channel. Oh. Now you press menu. No one knows how to get out of that one. Which brings us to... <laughs> which brings us to our TV announcement of the week. Senders, Callum didn't seem to realize the power of his own voice. Morning. <laughs> Sorry, my fault. Morning. What? Put a sock in it, Callum. Sorry, my fault. Ah. <laughs> uh. There was a new, a new character on the square this week. Now, sometimes they arrive at... They arrive in a black cab. Sometimes they walk into the Queen Vic. This one just pitched up on the pavement. Oh. Hello, Jack. Kiss a job. Yeah, a new knitted character, and Jack took pity on him and gave him a job at the club, advising on financial matters. Yes, with interest rates so low, Jack, if I were you, I'd remortgage and throw the money back into the business. Because you know the chance they reduced interest rates to half a percent this week, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, I was a bit annoyed at the knitted character from East End is accepting that job because he's supposed to be working for me. Oi, knitted all right. character. <laughs> You've done my VAT for this quarter. Um, I'll do it as soon as I've done Jack's accounts. If I don't get it in on time, I'll get a fine. All right, keep your hair on, Baldy. <laughs> talk to me like that. I'm your employer. All right, I'll do it. You're only picking on me because I'm smaller than you. Just clear off. Roxy's little, 
Roxy's little baby, Amy. Oh, he's uh, back. Pencil. Oh, there it is. Oh. How's the salt, brother? Roxy's little baby Amy is really growing up. At only a few months old, she's capable of quite advanced hand movements. She's smiling at me. <laughs> Yeah, you don't need to sound so flattered. You've been doing that a lot recently. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she high-fived me the other day. Yeah, three-month-old baby already able to high-five. <laughs> yeah, she's a real streetwise kid. And you know what? It's going to be our little secret, OK? Yeah? Yeah, nice one. Give me a high-five. High-five. High-five, look. Woo-hoo, that's my girl. <laughs> yeah, I've got a baby. He's only two months. Here he is, look. Come on in. Yeah. All right, baby? Yo, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll change it later. Yeah. Actually, it's not my turn. <laughs> Whose turn is it? Peggy was busy with her campaign Who to run for Wolford Council. Yeah, she had special topical posters made up too. The printer just dropped him off. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> very of the moment. Oh, it's yeah, him. Well, I've got to go over there later. Oversee the first batch, you know, make sure there are no mistakes. Yeah, make sure there are no mistakes. Forgot he was well, in the show. I thought I'd help out, and I've got the first batch here. Yeah. That threw me off. Get through to see if there are any mistakes. Uh, well, that one, yeah, Peggy Mo Yes, she can, so that's fine. <laughs> so that, uh, that one, Peggy Mitchell, we don't... <laughs> She can't take yeah, so <laughs> that one. And, oh, it seems to be a problem with the colour balance on that one. Well, it's enough. It's completely wrong. And, uh, yeah, that's not right at all, that one. <laughs> so, mm. I was right to check those for mistakes. Heston Blumenthal was back with his Victorian feast. What? Harry? <laughs> Like Heston Blumenthal. I bet you do. It's something about him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he had all sorts of guests on this week. I know exactly what that is. I can't. There's a caramel in there. Oh, yes. Toffee, burnt toast. Wait a minute. Yeah, Toby Young. Yeah, I really like him too. I don't know why. <laughs> aim to recreate the great Victorian feasts. Great. I love learning new recipes so I can then cook them for my friends. Talk us through it, Heston. All I've done with this is made a consomme, froze it, ice filtered it overnight so it's really clear. Then I just froze it again, put it in a centrifuge like a vegetable juice and it spun all of the clear broth from the ice. Right. And then I froze it again in the minus 80 freezer. <laughs> and all I needed to do after that was pop it in a freeze dryer. <laughs> and simply add gelatine and finish in Madeira. <laughs> all that for that? Say again. Oh, I did all that, but what I ended up with is, uh, is that. Oh. <laughs> Looks better to me. Oh, mm, God. Oh, mm. Yeah. I think my minus 80 freezer was playing up. Yeah. That's probably it. took curries and asked for a new one and was escorted from the shop. <laughs> <laughs> I was most interested to hear what the Victorians did for entertainment back then, in the days before TV. Have you got any information about the Victorians' love for jelly? The Victorians used to put jellies down the centre of their tables and then they would watch them wobble and that would be a form of amusement during the meal. <laughs> What do you say we give it a go? Yeah. All right. Hey, let's just get my fungus in the morning. Hey, let's just get my fungus in the morning. Yeah, I love to play my fungus. Yeah, I love to play my fungus. Yeah, I love to play my fungus in the morning. Yeah, most amusing. <laughs> By the way, you're watching ITV1. Oh. Heston Thank you. <laughs> was keen to recreate the magic shrinking potion drunk by Alice in Wonderland, which had a, a combination of most unusual flavours. This fictional drink caused Alice to shrink and contained the flavours of toffee, hot buttered toast, custard, cherry tart and turkey, 
all in one glass. The fuck? This was a magical drink that never even existed. Yeah, there may be a reason for that. <laughs> yeah, it sounds gross. The good news is, he pulls it off. Here it is. My Alice in Wonderland drink me potion. It looks like Pepto Bismol. Yeah, I've got one here. Let's give it a whirl. <laughs> to me no hey pepto bismol yeah i've shrunk to a fraction of my normal size wait a minute down here behind the desk that's where the oh god that guy's got pencil thanks Nicky can't yeah and, uh, sorry i shouted at you earlier oh lord You've all the budget for that one. <laughs> uh, a I must say, I witnessed an amazing act of bravery on Britain's best dish this week. In a bold rescue attempt, John passes his custard through a sieve. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, that was nasty Nick actor John Altman. Toya Wilcox was on it too. I thought her parents were a little harsh on her. This is a simple dish, and I've got to pull in all the brownie points possible. Toya's mum and dad have popped in to give their verdict on the tart. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> She's calmed down a lot. Now, on TV Burke, we go into the ad break by holding a fight, but a lot of shows use what is known as a teaser, which makes you stay tuned to find out what happens next. They often use one on Britain's best dish. Well, clearly there's all to play for. Can Cleo's sizzling fajitas outspice Annika's competition pie? Also coming up, it's an England-France grudge match. Trifle against Tartatin. Join us after the break. <laughs> yeah, the English trifle versus the French Tartatin teaser into the break. That's, that's not something we would ever consider. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. It's because I like Tartatin and I like trifle, but... <laughs> Which is better? There's only one way to find out. That guy's early. <laughs> that guy in the audience is early. <laughs> oh. See you after the break. Oh, oh, he... oh, he gave him a one, two. Absolutely. Robson Green gets to know the locals on Extreme Fishing. I'm here to catch the mystical sturgeon. You must be Randy. <laughs> Wallace, Wallace and Gromit face on Pop Goes the Band. Shelley's decided to polish up her <laughs> And Christopher Dean tries to attract a mate on Dancing on Ice. <laughs> Never do that again. Well, I must say, I was very disappointed in the swing ball skills on display on Wild at Heart. Maybe the rules haven't reached Africa yet. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure about this. Well, come on, give it a bit of well. Oh, that's it. The girl in the blue's given up, look. She's not going to do anything. No, no, you've got to play it high. Come on, bruh. Get your back behind it. Fucking hit it. This is saying it's pathetic. Go on. Give it a big hit. There you go. Oh, Jesus. Play it high. Go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah. That's a swing ball. How does that Beatles song go? I couldn't dance with another. Whoa, whoa. I saw her stand <laughs> <in there. laughs> Elsewhere on Emmerdale, Zach had a new kind of hairstyle. It's called the movable afro. It's the only thing I could do. <laughs> yeah, the movable afro. Right, 
get the idea with that. <laughs> then it turned out that Zach not only operates his afro, he operates Sam using a sophisticated keyboard. So how about it? Uh, well, yeah? I, 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 I might talk. Uh, 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 Which brings us to our TV highlight of the week. TV highlight of the week. <laughs> what the hell? Now, three weeks ago, we outlined how Jeremy Paxman likes to travel everywhere by barge. At the dawn of the 19th century, Britain was on the move. Hmm, yes, well, it, it turns out that a lot of the top BBC newsroom brass travel in a similar manner, as demonstrated by Andrew Marr in Darwin's Dangerous Idea on BBC Two this week. Charles Darwin's dangerous idea began to take root in 1831. Yeah, he travels everywhere by boat. All right, there he goes. Uh, Whoa. Oh, I like this. This wasn't the first program about Doug. Oh, a door. Attention seeking door. This wasn't. <laughs> The first program about Darwin by any means, but being Andrew Marr, he has to ramp up the odds. Has Darwin killed God? <laughs> oh no, we, we, we did that, we did that, yeah. Mm. But, but what I enjoyed most about this show was what? Andrew Marr's brilliant Victorian impressions. First, he gave us his Queen Victoria. The young Queen Victoria visited the apes in London Zoo and said, the orangutan, is too wonderful. He is painfully and frightfully and disagreeably human. What an uncanny likeness. Yeah. Then is Benjamin Disraeli. The great Victorian statesman Benjamin Disraeli famously asked, is man an ape or an angel, my lord? I am on the side of the angel. This is if he's in the room. A talented impressionist like that, I'd like to see him tackle something a little more modern. Andrew Marr, and here are my impressions. <laughs> Catherine Tate. <laughs> Am I bothered? Face bothered? Am I? Gordon Brown. I predict reduced growth in the economy. Alan Sugar. <laughs> You're fired. Chris Tarrant. Welcome to the most stressful show on television. <laughs> Anton Deck. <laughs> Why I? <laughs> Why I? <laughs> Heston Blumenthal. Hey. Toby Young. Hey. Derek Accor is back with a new format, quite different to the old one, where he used to go to places in a van at night looking for ghosts. Sam and I don't like the dark. Please, will you put the house lights up? I don't like the dark. We spent three whole series stumbling about in the dark. What are you trying to say? Enid. 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 Who? It's the dark that made you what you are today, mate. <laughs> but don't worry, Derek is back on flying form. I and still can't believe Starting with a, a gentleman, shit like that. first off, and um, with this man, who? Reg. And he's also mentioned Frank. Thank you. Okay, what's that uniform? <laughs> That's me. Years, That's I, me. I can see the uniform. In his younger years, please, I don't know what he was in the... Is this a real show or is this satire? Please tell me this is satire. Like, I, I know there really are people who are just dumb, but, like, please tell me this is a satire show. <laughs> God, I hate, I just hate shit like this so much. Air Force, I don't feel he was a pilot because of his attire, but he's keen to show me that, and he's transported back into the older age Mood. in which he passed. He may not even be family, he may be just known to you. These people know they wasted $20. Frank 
Jack or Reg? Yeah. Anyone? Okay. Could, yes, please, could you, a microphone, please? What did you say? Um, good afternoon. My, yeah. my father, his name was Hugh, and he was in the Air Force. Oh, and he yeah. didn't fly, he was a civil engineer. That'll do. As you're thinking, I know this format. It's just like the old Derek Acora format, only with the lights on, he throws a curveball. Right, I'm joined very graciously um, by uh, a male dog. I can't say it's male. A male dog. Dog ghost! <laughs> yeah, the ghost of a dog. So, what message does this dog bring from the spirit world? Woof, 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 woof. <laughs> woof, 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 woof. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> For some of the audience, meeting up with their dead pets again was not quite what they'd expected when they'd agreed to attend the show. It just shook me up a bit, really. It just, it's not the sort of thing I would thought would come through. I was expecting my dad or someone to come through, not my cat. Can we please move on? I've got some new glasses made this week. Yeah, I hope you like them. Mm. I had them made because... Uh, I saw a lady on casualty wearing them. <laughs> what is she? <laughs> Life's good. Yeah. Yeah. Can I get those? Yeah. Yes, it's casualty. And if Thank you're God. after a pizza in the Holby area, never order the American hot. Pizza. Whoa! <laughs> You put extra chilies on that. <laughs> what I do enjoy about Casualty are the occasional special guest appearances. And this week saw a bumper harvest. First, Penfold off Danger Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then Eric Clapton on a drip. Well, there must be someone else. If it was, do you think I could? <laughs> Well, let's hope he's feeling better because he's here to sing us out with the theme from Casualty. It's Eric Clapton! Close enough. Bing, bing, bing. I love to play my boggles in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Nice to see you on the men. That's all from us here. See you next. Hey, man. See you next week. Oh, damn chicken. Oh god, that fucking ghost show wasn't. Oh god, it wasn't. It wasn't satire, was it? Oh, I hate people like that so much. I it's there's there are few things that make me more angry than that type of shit. Like ghost shows are one thing. I I I don't understand how anybody could possibly believe that shit because it's so fucking dumb. But. That's one thing. The psychic shit, though, that shit is harmful. That is literally a scam. They literally shell, they siphon money out of dumb people by doing that shit. And it's just, ah, uh, it causes me physically physical pain. I, I mean, I, I don't like ghost shows. I despise psychics. I despise buys them like it's oh it's just the worst uh that is it for me later thank you guys for watching if you liked the video be sure to leave a like if you didn't like it don't if you want to follow any of my social media links are on the video description down below as well as the names on my patrons uh if you didn't know you can be a patron of me for as little as one dollar one pound and you'd ask direction videos as well as you comments up to day, up to a day early sometimes more follow up being said though my name is taffer this has been my 12th 12th reaction to harry hills tv burp and i'll see you guys next time bye